This is the installation video for the 24-hour automatic tool changer. It is not a replacement for the installation guide document. You must read through the document for all the warnings, cautions, tool requirements, and any future changes. The most up-to-date version can be downloaded directly from Tormax website. If your machine serial number falls within RA-10001 and RA-10096, then you will need to install the Z-axis brake before attempting to install the 24-hour ATC. Check out this video up here to find out how to perform that procedure. If your machine has a serial number of RA-10001 to RA-10084, then a new power supply will be sent out to you that will also need to be installed before you can proceed with the 24-hour ATC installation. And the installation video is linked above as well. If your machine has a serial number of RA-10097 and above, or you have installed the Z-axis brake already, you can continue to the next step. To begin the installation, you will need to power on the machine and the controller. Turn the main disconnect switch to on. Twist out the machine's emergency stop button. Press the reset button. Bring the machine out of reset and reference it, starting with the Z-axis, and then the X and Y. Now that the machine is referenced, your 24R will need to have the latest version of PathPal installed. Click on the Status tab and select the Update button. Select the Check Online button, then the Install button, and OK to confirm. The newest version of PathPilot will then install. If you don't have your internet set up, click on the link above to view the Wi-Fi setup video to walk you through that procedure. If you don't have internet access, you can download the latest PathPilot update and install from a USB drive. The link to the latest PathPilot release is in the description. Prepare the machine. Make sure the collet nut is installed and there is no tooling in it. Put a block of wood below the spindle on the machine table, then slowly jog the Z-axis down until the spindle is resting on the block. Power off the machine and the PathPilot controller. Push in the 24-hours emergency stop button. Select Exit on PathPilot. Turn the main disconnect switch to off. Then follow the correct lockout tagout procedures. Remove the existing spindle. With the 3mm hex wrench, remove the 6 M5 button head cap screws that secure the front spindle cover. Set aside the screws and cover. Identify the spindle power connector and disconnect it. From the top of the spindle, disconnect the two water lines with a 14 mm wrench. The water lines might be difficult to remove, so cut them off cleanly about a half inch above the mount. Also, once you cut the first line, some distilled water will drain out. It can be drained into a cup and cleaned with a rag. Place some tape onto the spindle clamps and use a marker to indicate which is the top and which is the bottom. You'll use the marks later to correctly realign the spindle clamp. Remove the four M5 socket head cap screws that secure the spindle clamps. Keep a hand on the spindle as the screws loosen. Remove the spindle from the mount. Set aside the screws and the spindle clamps. If you have an extra person available, they can help you remove this. Install the new spindle. Keep the spindle no shipping spacer on the new spindle. And place the spindle onto some blocks, preferably a few feet long. Since your wood blocks might not be the correct height, Sections of cardboard will be helpful to raise a spindle so that the airline section in black is above the top mounting bracket. Once you get the correct height, use the marks to install the correct top and bottom mounts. Resecure the spindle clamps loosely in place. Double check that the black airline section of the spindle is above the clamp. Then tighten the clamp securely and check that the clamps are spaced evenly on each side. The spindle comes with shipping bolts, so you may want to remove those before installing the airlines. Remove the cap from the coolant ports with a 14 mm wrench. Each port comes with a shipping nipple, which can be discarded. Slide the cap back into the new air lines, then secure the black line to the water inlet and tighten that clamp. Perform the same procedure for the water outlet, but with a transparent line. Then tighten that cap as well. Identify the spindle power connector on the spindle and connect it to the machine spindle power connector. 
Gently pry some energy chain covers off with a small flat bladed screwdriver. We recommend leaving a few of the centerpieces installed to keep everything organized while you route the new lines. Remove the eight M5 screws that secure the rear Z-axis panel with the three millimeter hex wrench. Set aside the screws and the panel. Identify the power drop our sensor cable, which contains wire 545 through 547, and the tool position sensor cable, which contains wire 548 through 550. Connect these PDB and TPS cables to the coordinating cables on the spindle. Route the power drawbar wires, tool positioning cable wire, and the power drawbar open button wire through the energy chain and toward the rear Z-axis cover. Rewire the ATC cable. To determine if you need to connect your ATC cable, open the electrical cabinet, and on the X2 terminal strip, find wires 490, 491, and 492. If the wires are connected, skip forward in this video to the chapter called Install the Solenoid Tray. If the wires aren't connected and the three terminal blocks on the top are blank, continue on with the next steps in this video. Remove the wire trough covers. Locate the ATC cable. The cable is either in the leftmost wire trough or in the bottom wire trough. It's a black cable with six black wires and one yellow green wire. From the end of the ATC cable, measure six inches and make a mark. Carefully strip away and remove the cable's main insulation all the way back to the mark with a knife or an insulation stripping tool. Push the metal sleeve back so that it bunches up at the bottom and carefully cut away the material with some wire cutters. Then wipe off the talcum powder from the wires. Trim away the extra plastic and paper from inside the cable. Strip one quarter inch off the ends of the six black wires with the wire stripper. In the rear Z-axis cover, find the round ATC connector on the ATC cable. Use the following table displayed on screen to identify each wire. Use a multimeter to perform a continuity test between each pin on the ATC connector and each of the six black wires at the other end of the cable. Then apply a wire number label to identify each of these wires. Double check the continuity to make sure each and every one is correct. Cut off the remaining three black wires and the one yellow green wire back at the main insulation with a pair of cutters. These wires aren't used for any connections. Clean up any remaining metal sheathing and tape the wires back with electrical tape. On the X2 terminal strip, find the three open terminal blocks that you identified earlier. Connect wire 492 to the terminal block across from wire 487 by inserting a small flat bladed screwdriver into the spring cage. Remove the screwdriver and pull on the wire to make sure it's secure. Then insert wire 491 and 490 into the open terminal block next to wire 492. Connect wire 508 to the negative 24 volt DC by connecting it to one of the open terminals. Install the solenoid tray. Route the extra length of air supply line back through the energy chain into the solenoid tray. Find the solenoid tray provided with this kit and then identify the ATC control board mounted on it. Connect the power drawbar button wires labeled BTN from the Z-axis energy chain to the J6 connector on the ATC control board. Then from the spindle, connect the gray TPS cable to the J7 connector and the gray PDB cable to the J8 connector. Identify the pre-installed ATC cable in the rear Z-axis cover that connected the ATC power connector on the ATC solenoid control assembly. Lift the ATC solenoid control assembly up into the bottom of the rear Z-axis cover while being careful not to pinch the wires. Align the threaded holes on the side of the tray with the horizontal slots in the rear Z-axis cover. Find the five M5 screws provided with this kit and use them to secure the solenoid control assembly to the rear Z-axis cover. Bring the extra long air supply line to the connection and cut to size, making sure not to cut too short. Then connect it to the 8mm push to connect fitting on the ATC control assembly. 
Connect the FRL to the rear of the 24R. Remove the two 1 quarter inch push to connect fittings on either side of the FRL with a 14 millimeter open socket wrench. Then secure the two 5 16 inch push to connect elbows to either side of the FRL with the 14 millimeter open socket wrench. Teflon tape is pre-installed on either side of these elbows. The FRL's dial does need Teflon tape. Wrap this tape onto the threads, then secure the dial to the FRL. Do not over tighten. On the rear of the 24R, remove the bottom hex screw on the top side of the panel with a hex wrench. Then slide the included socket head cap screw into the top FRL bracket and slide the spacer onto the back side. Then secure the socket head cap screw with a wrench. Attach the air line going into the 24R to the right push to connect elbow. Then take the six inch air line with air fitting and connect this to the left push to connect elbow. It's important that you don't connect your air supply yet. This will be done later in this procedure. Connect the air lines to the spindle. Route the loose ends of the air lines from the solenoid control panel assembly through the Z-axis energy chain and toward the spindle. Identify the two air lines labeled lift and EXD for external. Route the air lines toward the spindle out the front of the Z-axis energy chain two links before the spindle cover. These will be connected later in this video. Identify and connect the blast air line to the dust removal fitting. Then the open air line to the air inlet fitting. The seal air line to the air sealed fitting and then the closed air line to the air return fitting. If the air lines are too long, trim them to length, but do not cut them too short. Install the power drawbar button. Unplug the power drawbar button at the connector near the spindle from the wires previously routed up through the Z-axis energy chain. Put the power drawbar button into the hole on the spindle cover and tighten the lock washer nut onto the button. Earlier machines from RA-10001 to RA-10036 didn't include a hole for the power drawbar button. If you have one of these machines, use a new spindle cover provided in this kit. If you didn't receive one, contact Tormach Technical Support. While holding the spindle cover up to the spindle head, identify the power drawbar button wires from the Z-axis energy chain and plug them into the power drawbar button. Slide the spindle cover back onto the spindle bracket and align the screw holes. Use a 3mm hex wrench to attach a spindle cover to the spindle head with the 6 M5 screws removed earlier in this procedure. Once this is done, you can reinstall the energy chain clips. Install the lift dust shoe. Make sure the top push to connect fitting on the dust shoe has the adjustment valve. If it is installed on the bottom, Remove it with the wrench and switch it to the top location. Check that the fittings are secure. Slide the non-flanged end of the dust shoe under the spindle. Then align the center dust shoe holes to the spindle cover. Mount the lift dust shoe to the spindle cover with the two socket head cap screws. Install the airline labeled lift to the push to connect fitting into the lower portion of the double rod cylinder. Install the airline labeled extend to the push to connect fitting on the double rod cylinder. Lift and lower the dust shoe to determine if it rubs on the spindle. If it does, loosen the Phillips screws underneath. Adjust the position of the shoe until it's clear of the spindle and then retighten the screws. Install the ATC communication board. In the electrical cabinet from the machine control board, remove the four screws securing the acrylic board shield with a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. Set aside the shields and the screws. Find the ATC communication board provided in this kit. Then plug the black connector on the ATC communication board into the P1 auxiliary port on the machine control board. Locate the wire harness for the ATC communication board with wires labeled 530 and 531. Connect the loose end of wire 530 to the open port on the terminal block connected to wire 490. Connect the loose end of wire 531 to the open port of the terminal block connected to wire 491. Connect the loose end of wire 529 to the open port of the terminal block connected to wire 508. P1 
plug the green connector of the wire harness into the J2 connector on the ATC communication board. Reinstall the acrylic board shield to the machine control board with the four hex screws that you set aside earlier. Tuck all the wires back into the wire troughs and replace all the wire trough covers. Install the ATC rack. Remove the four M8 bolts securing the standoffs to the bottom of the ATC rack with the 6mm hex wrench and the 16mm open wrench. Set aside the M8 bolts. On the back end of the machine, locate the three M8 threaded holes on the side of the machine. If you don't see the three threaded holes on your machine, then you will need to remove the linear rail covers and punch out the tabs. Remove the five M5 button head cap screws securing the left and right linear rail covers to the bed casting with the three millimeter hex wrench. Place one short and one long wood block onto a secure work surface and align the notch of the linear rail cover onto the open space. Break the tab securing the punch out to the linear rail cover with a punch and a hammer. Start with one of the tabs closest to the edge of the linear rail cover. Break the remaining tabs one by one, working your way around the punch out until all the tabs are broken. Remove the punch out. Repeat these same steps on the punch out on the other linear rail cover. Reattach the linear rail cover to the bed of the machine with a three millimeter hex wrench and the five M5 button head cap screws that you set aside earlier. Mount the ATC rack. Install the standoffs into the two holes toward the front end of the machine, leaving the third one open. Verify that the mounting screws for the tool forks are on the bottom of the rack. Mount the ATC rack to the top of the standoffs with the four M8 bolts that you set aside earlier. Inspect the ATC board. Power on the machine and the path pedal controller. Insert the power plug into the wall outlet. Turn the main disconnect switch to on. Twist out the machine's red emergency stop button. Press the reset button. Bring the machine out of reset and reference X, Y, and Z. If you didn't update to the latest version of PathPilot earlier in this video, you must do it now to proceed. Once PathPilot has been updated, open the settings tab and select Rack Tool Changer. The Rack ATC tab will appear next to the status tab. In the rear Z axis cover, on the ATC control board, inspect the power and status LED lights. Confirm that the green power LED is on and that the amber status LED is off. Adjust the ATC air pressure settings. At the back of the 24R, connect the air line from the air compressor to the FRL's air fitting inlet that you connected earlier. The air compressor should be set between 90 PSI and 120 PSI. The spindle nose air seal and dust shoe extend pressure regulator provides a constant airflow for the spindle nose to keep dust out of the spindle bearings during operation. And the pressure regulator controls the flow of air that is purged from the spindle nose and provides a downward force on the dust shoe. Identify the dust shoe lift speed control valve on the top of the lift dust shoe cylinder. Loosen the locking nut. Then open the valve by turning the adjustment screw counterclockwise one to three full turns. Identify the spindle nose air seal and dust shoe extend pressure regulator and pull down to unlock the pressure regulator. Turn the knob counterclockwise to increase the air pressure until you begin to hear the air coming from the air seal around the nose of the spindle. Place the palms of both hands below the bristles of the lifting dust shoe and lift the dust shoe upward. Then release the lifting dust shoe and allow it to extend. If the lifting dust shoe does not fully extend, then turn the air pressure regulator clockwise to increase the pressure. If the bristles on the dust shoe bend too much when lifting the dust shoe with both hands, then turn the pressure regulator counterclockwise to decrease the pressure. Once the pressure is set properly, push the knob back up to lock the pressure regulator. The dust shoe lift pressure regulator controls the upward force applied to the lifting dust shoe when in the up position. From the PathPot interface, select Lift Lower Dust Shoe. On the bottom of the ATC solenoid control panel, Identify the dust shoe lift pressure regulator and pull down to unlock the pressure regulator. Turn the knob clockwise to increase the lifting pressure until the dust shoe lifts all the way up. If you can't push the lifting dust shoe downward with two fingers, turn the pressure regulator counterclockwise to decrease the pressure. Push down on the dust shoe with two fingers until it goes down with only a slight resistance. From PathPilot, 
select the lift lower dust shoe button to make sure the dust shoe goes down fully. The dust shoe goes back down. The dust shoe lift speed control valve fitting is a one-way control valve and controls how quickly the dust shoe moves upward when it is lifted. From PathPilot, select the lift lower dust shoe button to lift the dust shoe. Observe the speed how quickly the dust shoe lifts. Select the button again to lower the dust shoe. The dust shoe lift speed control valve is on the top of the dust shoe lifting cylinder. Rotate the adjustment screw clockwise to decrease the dust shoe lifting speed. Rotate the adjustment screw counterclockwise to increase the lifting speed. Repeat these steps until the dust shoe lifts and lowers at roughly the same speed. Verify the power drawbar function. Identify the power drawbar button on the front of the spindle cover. Then press and hold it. The power drawbar valve opens inside of the spindle. Insert an ISO 20 tool holder into the spindle and release the power drawbar button. The drawbar closes and locks the tool into the spindle. While holding the tool in the spindle, select the collet button on the Rack ATC tab on PathPilot. The drawbar opens and releases the tool from the spindle, then remains in the open position. With the tool out of the spindle, select collet and the drawbar closes. Select collet again to lock the drawbar in the open position. Then select air blast. Air purges from the center of the spindle for about one second and then turns off. Verify the spindle direction. You must verify the spindle direction before operating the machine. If you don't, you could operate the spindle in the reverse direction, which could damage the spindle. Remove the collet nut from an ISO 22 holder and put a piece of tape tightly onto the threads. Draw a vertical line onto the tape then install the tool holder into the spindle. Switch to the main tab and in the RPM DRO field, type 10,000, then press the enter key. While observing the spindle, select forward and then select stop. The spindle turns on, rotates clockwise and turns off. The tape line should help you determine which direction the spindle turned. If you're having issues determining the direction, use a smartphone to shoot slow motion footage and play that back. If the spindle rotated counterclockwise, power off the machine and on the variable frequency drive in the electrical cabinet, swap wire U and wire V. Then power the machine back on and start up the spindle at 10,000 RPMs again. If the spindle successfully spins counterclockwise, then you've completed the spindle function verification. Align the ATC rack. Before using the 24-hour ATC for the first time, you must set the tool change positions for pocket A and J to align the ATC rack to the machine's reference position. Install an ISO 20 tool holder into the spindle. Jog the machine down in front of the leftmost pocket, pocket A of the ATC rack. Visually align the tool holder's groove to the ATC fork. Then jog the machine in the Y plus direction to move the tool holder into the A position fork. Make sure both forks start to bend out at the same time when the tool starts to engage the fork. Make slight adjustments in the X direction as needed. Continue jogging the machine in the Y plus direction until the tool fork is seated into the ATC fork. You can determine this visually or by stopping the jog and rotating the tool by hand. When the tool reaches the back of the fork, the drag will increase. Select the Set TC POS button to teach PathPilot the G53 location of pocket A. Jog the machine in the Y minus direction to remove it from the ATC rack. Keep the Z height at the same position and jog over in the X direction to line up the tool holder with pocket J, just like pocket A. Then set the location for pocket J by clicking on the TC POS button. Jog the machine in the Y minus direction to remove the tool holder from the ATC rack. To test, and with the tool in the spindle, type the tool number in the tool DRO and click on the M6 G43 button. Then click on Store Current Tool, and the 24-hour will automatically choose the location and store the tool holder. Break in the spindle. To prolong bearing life and reduce spindle noise, it's important to run the spindle through a break-in procedure before operating the machine. You must perform this procedure once for a new spindle. Remove the nut from a tool holder and load the holder into the spindle. From the PathPilot File tab, open the Examples folder. 
Then double click the program called 24R SpindleBreakin.ngc. The program loads onto the main tab. Select Cycle Start and the spindle will run through the 3 hour break-in procedure where it will spin up in increments of 10,000, 20,000, and 24,000 RPMs. Once the three hours are over, the break-in procedure will be complete. Load a tool into the spindle. With one hand, press and hold the power drawbar button on the front of the spindle cover. The drawbar will open. With the other hand, insert the shank of the tool into the spindle taper. Then release the power drawbar button. The drawbar closes and clamps the tool into the spindle. From PathPilot in the Tool Number DRO field, Type in the tool number, then select the enter key on the keyboard. Remove a tool from the spindle. From PathPilot, select dust shoe, and the dust shoe lifts. With one hand, support the tool holder in the spindle. With the other hand, press and hold the power drawbar button on the front of the spindle head, and the tool will release. From the PathPilot Rack ATC tab, in the Remove DRO field, type the number of the tool that you wish to remove, then select the enter key. Store the current tool into a pocket. By default, the 24R ATC is a random pocket ATC. This means that to load and store a tool in the ATC rack, you only need to select the Store Current Tool button. PathPilot then finds an open pocket to use. However, you can also actively select a pocket by using the Selected Pocket drop-down menu. Automatically select a pocket. If you haven't yet done so, load a tool into the spindle. From the PathPilot ATC tab, Select Store Current Tool. The drop-down menu selection defaults to Auto. The machine moves to the first available ATC pocket and stores the tool into the ATC rack. Select a specific pocket. Load a tool into the spindle. From the PathPilot ATC tab, select a pocket number from the Selected Pocket drop-down menu. Press on the Store Current Tool button. The machine will move to the selected ATC pocket and store the tool in the ATC rack. The tool will then populate the tool location on the tool rack DRO. Fetch a tool from a pocket. In the tool number DRO field, type the desired tool number, then select the enter key on the keyboard. When the use ATC to fetch tool dialog box opens, select yes. The spindle moves the selected tool and loads into the spindle. Remove a tool from the ATC. From the PathPilot Rack ATC tab in the Remove DRO field, type in the tool number. Press the Remove button. The machine fetches the selected tool from the ATC rack, deletes the tool number from the ATC, and returns to the tool loading position. With one hand, support the tool holder in the spindle. With the other hand, press and hold the power drawbar button. The tool will release. PathPilot changes the current tool number in the tool number DRO to zero. Measure a tool. If you haven't yet done so, load a tool into the spindle. From the ATC tab on PathPilot, select Move and Set Tool Length. The machine moves to the tool setter, measures the tool, and applies the offset in the tool table window on the Offsets tab. Touch off the entire ATC rack. Rather than loading and measuring each tool separately, you can instead use the machine and electronic tool setter to measure all the tools that are loaded in the ATC rack. If you haven't yet done so, Load all of the desired tools into the ATC rack and place the ETS into position. You may have to set up the ETS beforehand. On the ATC tab, select Touch Off Entire Rack. The 24R fetches each tool from the rack and measures them with the ETS. It then stores the tool back into the ATC rack. The 24R repeats a step for all the tools stored in ATC rack. There, you've just installed the 24R ATC. If you had any issues during the install, please check out the troubleshooting section or fill out a Tormach support ticket on the Tormach support page. Thanks for watching.